But welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. My name is Tracy and I'll be your guide. I was mentioning this tour is a self-guided tour. Um, uh, just give a little background and then we have a short film. It's an older film and it was narrated by the children who lived in the home. So I think you'll enjoy it with some great stories about things that happened in the home. And then you're free to roam around inside and, and out and feel free to take any photographs. But to give you a little background, this home was originally built in 1939 for H.F. Johnson Jr., his two children, Sam and Karen, his wife Jane, and her two boys. But unfortunately, before the home was finished in 1939, Mrs. Johnson passed away unexpectedly. So of course, Mr. Johnson was devastated. Her two boys went to live with their father, but he decided to still move into the home with his two children. So they, they moved in here in 1939. Shortly after that, he met his third wife, Irene Purcell, her name was, she was a film star at the time, and she moved into the home. And so they all lived here from 1939 to 1959. In 1959, the kids moved out, and Mrs. Johnson partic didn't particularly care for Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture and never really felt like this was her home. So they built a home right next door in 59, and then they donated this home to the Johnson Foundation to be used as a conference center. And today it is still a working conference center. In 2002 on the property, they built a 42 room guest house. So now when the attendees come, they never have to leave the property. So, and so, and so anybody can you rent out the conference center? It, it's the nonprofit for nonprofit organizations okay. only. Right now, they focus, each year they, they focus on something, it's, it's children's mental health this year. So uh -huh. we just had a conference last week. Uh -huh. Usually they're three, four day conferences. A uh -huh. little bit about the home. It's, this was Frank Lloyd Wright's largest single family home, 14,000 square feet. And he described his concept to Mr. Johnson as having distinct separate living spaces all flowing into one central gathering space. Uh, the wings in the home, the first one when you walked in, that is originally a carport. Uh, now it is tour offices, so you're just not able to go into that wing. And then the wing right behind me here is and uh, was the kitchen wing. It's still used, we still use it when we prepare meals. So because of codes, you're not able to go in that. But otherwise, you're free to roam, roam the house. The other wing here, the north floor, lower wing, where the restrooms were added in the coat room, was originally storage. Uh, for the family. And you can also, I don't know if you had a chance to look at, there's some photos of when this house was a home. Yeah, some of the personal touches. Mr. Wright didn't particularly care, like the curtains and everything else. So you can take a look at that. Um, upstairs is the bedroom wing, but I don't know if you noticed the crow, what we call the crow's nest, the spiral staircase going up. That was designed by Mr. Wright on the request of the son, Sam Johnson. He wanted somewhere where he could go up and see his father, who was a pilot, fly in and out of the city. So feel free to go up there. It's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful, on a beautiful day, it's really gorgeous, but it's kind of claustrophobic and it's only meant for one person, but feel free. Then down, there's just a sitting area down that wing. The first room was Mr. Johnson's bedroom. The second room is one of my favorite. It's a sitting area with a fireplace, and we're also told it was Eleanor Roosevelt's favorite room as she stayed here frequently. The third bedroom up there uh, was Mrs. Johnson's bedroom. It did have a wall that was taken out and it became a conference center, and every bedroom in the home did have a bathroom. They were taken out except the last remaining original one is up on the second level. And then at the very end was Karen, the daughter's room and you'll see a cantilevered balcony. Um, Franklin Wright designed that because he felt every young woman should be serenaded. So. Mm -hmm. And then this course is the central gathering place. This was the, the area where the family spent the most time. The vocal point here, the 30 foot chimney, it houses five fireplaces, four on this level, one on the second level, and when you watch the film, you'll hear a story why the fireplace on the second level was only used once in the history of this home. Uh, the, the, this was the main source of heating for the home as well as radiant heat flowing. But of course it was the 30s, it, it wasn't quite perfected yet, so they did bring forced air into the house. 
And of course, Cherokee Red Print, my wife's favorite, the brickwork, the mortar, and the horizontal joints once again was raked out to give the building a more flowing steam line effect. Again, the use of perfection in his work. And the Casota stone is what you'll find throughout the house that was mined in Minnesota. The floor is a concrete, tinted concrete. And the furniture, all of course designed by Franklin Wright to the Ottomans, the couch. And then the last wing, we will go down for the movie, but that was Sam, the son's bedroom wing, and at the very end is a playroom. It has a fireplace, a door going out to the pool. It also has a panel depicting the history of wing spread you might want to take a look at too. Okay, so that's a little old, where we can walk this way. This, this is also unique to the home. Um, family used it when they entertain for soup and ciders. And this is also two original. This is a secret uh, music system, 78 uh, records. And uh, it's still used to this day. We used it for our Christmas party. Only the president can touch it. But they said that when this was built uh, at the t in the 30s, it cost as much as an automobile. Welcome. Hi. There's a couple more coming. Are they okay? We're just the two are self-guided, so I just gave an overview, and then now there's a movie, but that's narrated.